What's up, everybody? Welcome to a brand new episode of Grand Chancellor. With me today is Mike D'Elia. All right, Mike, what's today's episode about? I'm thinking about duality. All right. So basically, crap you learned in uh, kindergarten, the opposites. So without... what is duality for us? Like for me, like, I don't know what duality is. Duality. Well, have you ever played the Stanley Parable? No. Well, there's a really uh, <clears throat> sort of meta scene at the end. Sort of like, which acts as a sort of behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. But at the end of that, uh, you see an on off switch. And the statement behind that is how much they need each other, yet they seek to destroy each other. What is this again? An on off switch. Oh, an on off switch. I thought you said something completely else. So uh, the idea behind that is you cannot have one thing without its uh, opposite. opposite. It's like fi fire and water. Yeah. Light and dark. Peanut butter and jelly. I wouldn't go that far. Peanut butter and jelly, guys. <laughs> uh, but at the uh, at the same time, that uh, demonstrates, a, well, two different hermetic laws. Okay. The Which first are? is the law of polarity. Okay. Which, which is, is what? Which is basically everything. For every one thing, there is an opposite. So for every blue chair, there's an orange chair. Because blue is the opposite of orange, actually. I heard it was purple that was the opposite of no, blue. No, if you do like the circle, color wheel. This is not the color wheel episode. Well, that'll be another week. <laughs> anyway, but yes. So for every... No, that's on Ethan's show. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so for every for every good, there's a bad. For every light, there's a dark. Yeah. And so, and so on. So, and the second one is controversial nowadays. Which is? The law of gender. That basically dictates that... Uh, Forever, there is an opposite, uh, but at the same time, those opposites either attract or repel or give or receive. Mm -hmm. Like, think of blood types. Uh, AB is the universal recipient, and O oh, is the yeah, universal yeah, donor. Yeah. So, if you th uh, think about it like that, uh, a cup is a recipient of water, and water gives life. Mm -hmm. Uh now, what if someone were to upset this balance or were to discover a new opposite? What would happen then? Uh, that's tricky because some things, well, some things are hard to calculate the opposite. Yeah. Sort of, but for every apple, there's an orange. Mm -hmm. uh, for every avocado, there's uh, an artichoke. Mm hmm. But I'm not sure if those would be classified as opposites. But in reality, there. What if, like, what if there was a discovery of a new opposite to these items? How would it would it disrupt it? Would it add more to it, or would it like, what would do you, what do you think would happen? Well, I'd I'd say nothing in particular would happen. Oh, you, this this uh this thing has a new opposite. Uh, therefore, that furthers that sort of law. Okay. So for and are these laws like discovered by man or created by a god? Depends on how you look at them. Okay. Because uh, there's seven hermetic principles. Which are? Uh, well, I'm not going to get into okay. those today because I'd have to uh, describe them in depth. But uh, there's the law of vibration, the law of I mean, once you look at uh, the law of the, the law of attraction. Uh, that's only a half truth. It's uh, basically the law of gender. Mm. You attract what uh, you put in, and you repel what you're not alike. Well, think of it in terms of magnets. Okay. Uh, because magnets they either opposite yeah. attracts. Yes. Op opposites attract exactly. One thing cannot exist without the other. Okay. Very and true. Yet, Introverts and extroverts. Yeah. We can't uh, calculate what is dark without knowing that there what Weird light, light produces light looks it. like. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. Therefore, the they're the same. Uh, they're different sides to the same coin, like the yin yang. Yin yang. Okay. Now let's say there was no opposites, no extremes. What would the world? How would how would we function then if everything was just the light and good? Robotically. 
So what do you mean by robotic? Uh, there would be no decisions to make. What would we like have there, like, the free will of the still live and everything, or would because there's the extreme of good? Well, you you know the uh, fight or flight response. Yes. That would just be. Uh, that would just fight. be flight. Okay. Or, or fight. There would be no. Anything else. So you would just have an automatic response to the things already. So to for the things already, and you would have uh, only one option instead of two or three. So normally, like option would be like greet someone would be either like uh, like a handshake or the opposite would be a fight. So now because we live in this world, let's say this perfect like white like light world, it would always be hellos all the time. There would be no occasion to fight. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So we only have. We would, Hi, how are you? So my question would be. But wouldn't we only so you eliminate half of the bad? Mm -hmm. So wouldn't we still have multiple choice of the same good though? So you have multiple choice of the same good, but it's still the same action. Still, then. Uh, you could go back to Oedipus on this. Okay. Uh, his uh, choice was either to run towards or away from his fate, but by running away from it, he ran towards it. Okay. Sort of, um, but he made the decision to do that. So essentially, there there would be no such thing as a utopia, if, yeah. because it would eliminate all our options, and we would lose the sense of free will. But would the sense of God still exist then, if we have this sense of like free will to an extent? To an extent. Well, that doesn't discount the existence of God. It just discounts the existence of demons and devils, or a just God in general. Okay. Uh, because. If he were a just God, he would give us the freedom to choose between him and something else. So, would this case would God be the villain then, or villain like, eliminating our chances of like of choosing our own options and our own destiny? I wouldn't say that it, it would make him infallibly evil. I'm not saying I he's say, evil, but I'm uh, saying like yeah. he would not be as mighty as and great as he would be then. Almost like a lawful evil. He's restricting yeah. us before they're better own, but it takes yeah. away from almost like the Garden of Eden. Yeah, but even then, so uh, weakness would not be interpreted without strength. Okay. So, uh, and some would argue based on uh, the derivative of the word left, mm -hmm. that left, uh, the original translation go went back to the word weak because you know it goes back to uh the way people are the left-handed people mm. are at the mercy of a right-handed world no what and is, i mean that on the literal sense yeah what is the left-hand people uh well back on the uh, idea of uh duality they are serving their own interests at the expense of the collective. Okay. Uh, or you could even uh, interpret that as uh, creators of chaos. Uh, okay, so the left is the creator. No, uh, just to clarify, everyone, the left, we're not talking about like pol politically left or right. We're talking about in well, what not sense. yet. Yeah, but what are we talking about when we say left and right, though? Uh, <clears throat> different interpretations of how one would do it because uh, even in Christianity, you have the collective of people going to church on Sunday and collaborating and congregating uh, and praying as a collective group one single prayer the whole time. Uh, but then you get to get into the subject of the interior life, which mm. is the everyday uh, routine of your average individual, which is, uh, I mean... You could take a cynical perspective on pretty much anything uh, that, uh, on the basis that one cannot exist without the other, mm -hmm. uh, one can call people in general hypocrites for following a sort of system that neglects the human capacity for evil. Okay. Uh, or at least uh, says deny that capacity of evil. Now, I'm not saying that you should run towards it, but I'm saying that that exists and you cannot really accept yourself without acknowledging that you are capable of evil. 
Okay. Interesting. Very interesting. And if you do acknowledge that you are capable of evil, that is a sort of base level stepping stone for your own betterment. Like, what's the uh, first step in solving any problem? Acknowledging the problem. Exactly. Now, let's say we once we acknowledge this problem, what's stopping us from just going full on, well, I'm the villain, I'm just going to burn the world, world down now. I mean, that's their decision. So, okay. So, in this just... So, we have... In the world that... If, if we lived in a utopia, essentially, we lose all right to make our own decisions and life is autonomous. But yet, if we live in a world where we have... Well, autonomy means independence. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, 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 automated. Automated. That's what I meant. Thank you. While we live in the world with choices and this sense of left and right, it gives us the chance of self-decisions. Mm-hmm. But yet, we run to the risk of falling to evil. Yeah, because uh, at the end of the day, uh, if a person follows their own path, they're going to be facing their own decisions, Mm -hmm. whether to choose good or evil. Yes. But at the same time, if you follow the collective wholeheartedly, uh, become polarized Mm -hmm. uh, to a certain extent, uh, and not look at both aspects, you're going to lose who you are. Okay. And... But what if you're... Yeah. Who you are is being evil, then. Well, that's uh, a sort of tricky area because humanity, according to Father Chad Ripperger, who is an exorcist, mm-hmm. uh, humanity describes itself by its sins as opposed to its virtues. This is my experience. This is who I am based on this stuff that I did. Uh, that negatively impacted myself or other people. Mm -hmm. Because we struggle... Well, I'd say we struggle with that based on the fact that the subconscious cannot really interpret negative uh, statements. Okay. So it can't really interpret negativity at all. So would you say negativity, negativity in evil is just a construct of humanity? Uh, I would. Interesting. To a certain degree. Of course, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say that all humans are inherently evil. That, but you wouldn't uh, say all humans are inherently good, though. I, w- I would say that humans are... A white canvas that could be drawn with anything? Basically. Hmm. Uh, I, always enjoy, I always enjoy that perspective. Yeah. But um, we possess the capacity for both good and evil, and... At the end of the day, it's ultimately our own decisions that make who we are. And, well, everybody uh, you know can be judged mm. on the basis of who their five close friends are. True. Or ten, if you're lucky. Yeah. Well, you can never have too many friends. True. But you can have too many enemies. That is also true. Mm. But if you don't have enemies, that means you never stood up for anything in your life. Very True. Well, Mike, thank you once again for another great episode on the Grand Chancellor. You want to say anything else? I want to plug anything, do anything special? Right now, I'm good. All right. Well, once again, thank you everyone for listening for today's. Spe- uh, once again, thank you everyone for listening to today's episode. I'm Albert, and I'm signing off.